What tool would you use to safely move this test tube that's been sitting in boiling water for several minutes to this test tube rack? And what should you always wear when working with chemicals or cutting things or heating substances? What would you do if your notebook caught fire? During the next few minutes, we'll demonstrate some of the essential lab safety equipment you need to know how to use to prevent accidents and to use if an accident should occur. There are many different pieces of equipment found in your school science lab that are specifically designed so you can safely conduct experiments. We'll not only learn the name and purpose of many different kinds of lab equipment, but we'll also demonstrate how to effectively use them. First, let's talk about general safety. Rock climbers are people who enjoy physical challenges and adventure, but they're also people who are very aware of safety. If they don't think about safety first, the consequences can be severe. Whitewater kayaking is also an exhilarating sport that requires strength and skill. Experienced kayakers are well aware of the dangers of the sport and think about safety first. For this reason, kayakers always wear a helmet and a life jacket. And in the event of a mishap, they know how to safely deal with potentially dangerous situations. Scientists also think about safety first, whether it be their own physical safety, the safety of others, or the safety of their equipment. You too, as a science student, need to think about safety first in everything you do in the school science lab. Accidents you cause can be annoying, embarrassing, and maybe even painful. Damage to equipment can be expensive and dangerous. By conducting experiments safely, you can experience the thrill and fun of science. And remember, it's always easier to prevent or avoid an accident than it is to deal with the consequences of an accident. Believe it or not, one of the safest things you can do in the science lab is to dress appropriately. For example, don't wear bulky shirts or sweatshirts or blouses or sweaters that have loose sleeves. These can get caught in flames or can inadvertently come in contact with chemicals. Also, long, loose hair can be a hazard, so tie it back to keep it out of the way. The same goes for dangling jewelry. You decide. What should this student be wearing? That's right. This student should be wearing protective goggles. Protective eyewear is one of the most important pieces of science equipment and should always be worn when using chemicals or when cutting things to avoid the danger of pieces getting into your eyes. Remember, protective eyewear is only protective if you're wearing it. While wearing a pair of goggles may feel awkward at first, after a few minutes, you won't realize you're wearing them. The same holds true for a lab apron or a lab coat. These are worn to protect your clothing from chemicals or stains. On occasion, your teacher may also instruct you to wear gloves to protect your hands from harmful substances. Protective gloves come in the form of thin, disposable ones or thick, non-disposable gloves. These are some of the more common types of science safety equipment worn in most school science labs. Field hockey is a game with many rules. Soccer, too, has rules which all players must follow. There are also rules that need to be followed when conducting a science activity. These rules are designed to prevent accidents and avoid injury. One of the most important rules is to always follow directions. If you don't understand something, ask your teacher to explain. 
Another very important rule is to keep a neat workspace. Before you start, put things like book bags, papers, notebooks, and books where they won't be in the way. This goes for food as well. Don't eat, drink, or chew gum while conducting a science activity. Always treat equipment with respect and care. Most science equipment is breakable, so use caution when using it. You compare. What's the difference between this plastic dropper and this glass dropper? The plastic dropper doesn't break when dropped, but the glass one does break. All glassware, including beakers, test tubes, flasks, slides, and graduated cylinders are fragile. Breaking glassware is one of the most common laboratory accidents. However, there are a number of things you can do to help prevent such mishaps. Place glassware a safe distance from the edge of the table so it won't inadvertently be knocked off. When moving cool glassware, always have dry hands and make sure the glassware is dry. Wet glassware is very slippery. When grasping glassware which has been heated, use beaker tongs or test tube tongs as seen here. One of the unique properties of laboratory glassware is that you can't tell if it's hot or cold. This is because it doesn't change color or change shape relative to temperature. Always assume glassware is hot unless you're absolutely sure it's not. If you notice glassware that's chipped or cracked, tell your teacher. Cracked or chipped glassware is much more apt to crack or break further when placed under stress. Traditional thermometers are made of glass. While it may be tempting to stir a mixture, such as this ice and water mixture with a thermometer, don't. Thermometers are not designed to be used as stirring rods. Use a stirring rod that's specifically designed for this purpose. If glassware should break, immediately tell your teacher. Don't try to clean up the broken glassware without first telling your teacher. And follow your teacher's instructions for a safe cleanup. A microscope is one of the most fragile and expensive pieces of equipment in your school, and it can easily be damaged if used carelessly. Due to the fact that a microscope is made up of numerous lenses and many moving parts, it can easily be damaged if dropped. You observe. What's this person doing incorrectly? That's right. This student is only using one hand to carry the microscope. When carrying a microscope, use two hands, with one hand always under the base. Never place a microscope on the edge of a table. Place it back away from the edge a good distance. Another rule is to use the course adjustment knob only with the low power objective. Don't use the course adjustment with the high power objectives. This could break the slide and damage the objective lens. These are just a couple of important microscope safety tips. Listen closely to your teacher for other safety instructions regarding the use of the microscope. There are many different tools in your school science lab for measuring length, including rulers, meter sticks, and measuring tapes. No specific caution is needed when using these tools, except to use common sense, not to break or deface them. Tools for measuring mass need to be treated with a certain degree of care. For example, this triple beam balance is a fairly rugged instrument, but it can be damaged if dropped. Carry it securely with two hands, and set it back from the edge of the table so it won't accidentally be knocked off. 
This balance can only measure the mass of objects within its range. The mass of large objects cannot be measured. This same holds true for spring scales. In fact, a very large object can permanently damage the spring scale by stretching the spring so that it will not work properly. If you've ever burned your skin while cooking, working on an engine, or while using fire, you know how badly a burn hurts. Burns are not only painful, but they can be very dangerous. This is why the use of heat in the school science lab is a serious matter and should be used with extreme care. Remember, whenever heat is used, wear protective glasses or goggles. An open flame, such as a candle or a gas burner, can be a real hazard. Take care to prevent clothing, hair, or jewelry from coming into contact with an open flame. And never reach across an open flame. Always place a burner or candle on a stable surface. And make sure it's well away from combustible items, such as paper or chemicals. Instead of using open flames, your school may utilize hot plates, such as this one. Hot plates don't pose some of the hazards of open flames, but they can be dangerous. You observe. Is this hot plate cold or hot? One of the problems with hot plates is that you can't quickly tell if they're hot. Therefore, always assume a hot plate is hot, even if the knob is in the off position. Someone could have just turned it off, and it could still be extremely hot. Another safe practice is to unplug the hot plate when not in use. Let's now take a quick look at some of the safety equipment used if an accident should occur. Up to now, we've primarily talked about ways to prevent accidents. Most accidents can be prevented, but unfortunately, accidents still do happen. What pieces of lab equipment are at your disposal to help prevent serious injury if an accident should occur? When an accident occurs, the first thing you need to do is tell your teacher. He or she will know what to do and may ask you for assistance. If an accident does occur, your science classroom has many pieces of safety equipment to deal with it. One such piece of equipment is a fire extinguisher. If a fire breaks out, your teacher may put it out by suffocating it with a small amount of water. A bigger fire may require the use of a fire extinguisher. Science labs also contain an eye wash station. These are used to remove dirt or harmful chemicals from eyes. If you do get something in your eye, tell your teacher immediately, and he or she will help you use the eye wash station if necessary. These are some of the essential pieces of safety equipment found in your classroom. During the past few minutes, we've focused on the safe and effective use of common lab safety equipment. We began by stressing the importance of always thinking about safety first and the necessity of trying to prevent accidents from happening. Dressing for lab safety was demonstrated and some of the fundamental everyday safety rules were explored. Specifically, we discussed the safe use of glassware as well as the common safety concerns of microscope use. The various dangers of heat were highlighted with special emphasis on how to use specific equipment designed to work with heat. Finally, we discussed some of the equipment in the school science lab used in the event of an accident, including the fire extinguisher. So, the next time you do an experiment, use a microscope, or look around the school science lab, think about some of the things we've discussed during the past few minutes you just might think about lab equipment safety a little differently.
Fill in the correct word to complete the sentence. Good luck, and let's get started. Number one. It's important to always think about first. Number two. Before an activity, you need to for safety. Number three, always wear protective when using heat or chemicals. Number four, if you don't understand directions, your teacher. Number five, have hands when grasping cool glassware. Number six, use hands when carrying a microscope. Number seven, only use the adjustment with the high power objectives. Number eight, never reach an open flame. Number nine, always assume a hot plate is And number 10, if an accident does occur, immediately tell your 